three months, not one year or two years, seven years we've been promised that Obamacare would be repealed. And indeed, the House, uh, uh, you know, when the Republicans had a majority in the House for many of those years, actually did repeal, uh, vote to repeal it. Now, now the Republicans have the White House, they have the Senate, they have the House. They're not going to repeal it. We know they're not going to repeal it because the House bill that passed didn't repeal Obamacare. The Senate bill that's being proposed won't repeal Obamacare, if it even passes, if they can even muster enough votes to get even this passed. So one thing is clear. Obamacare is not going away. Now, this might be what the Repo- we get from the Republicans might be Obamacare light. But Obamacare, the, the, the very essential features of Obamacare, the very essential nature of Ob- Obamacare, the goal of Obamacare, that is not being challenged. That is not being repealed. That is not, not, not going away. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, why? Are Republicans just cowards? Are they just stupid? Are they, they just don't care about their constituency? Is it okay to lie to them? What is actually going on? What is driving the fact, the fact that Obamacare will not be repealed? Now, they don't get the votes. They don't have the votes. But why don't they have the votes, right? Why don't they have the votes? I mean, you guys all voted for these Republicans. Don't you guys all want Obamacare to be repealed? Well, it turns out, turns out that you don't. It turns out that you don't. Because what would it mean? What would it mean to repeal Obamacare properly and, and actually replace it properly? What, what do the Republicans claim? And what are the people who voted for Republicans claimed to stand for forever? What, you know, what, what is the alternative supposedly uh, that we have always assumed uh, was there you know, in, instead of Obamacare? What, what was going to be the alternative? Well, the alternative was going to be some movement towards free market health care. Some movement towards individuals taking on responsibility for their own health care, buying insurance for themselves, and, you know, allowing for a real free market in insurance, allowing, you know, moving to a system in which doctors, in which um, patients can negotiate, can actually see prices, a free market, right? I, I go to Best Buy, I shop for a computer or an iPad or whatever. I, you know, there's competition. I can, I can test the Samsung. I can test the Apple. I know what the price is. I can add features. I can reduce features. I can't do that in hospitals. I can't do that with doctors. I can't really do it with insurance policies because they're so, they're so rigid. They're so constrained. And why are they rigid? Why are they so constrained? Why do we have so few options when it comes to health care and when it comes to, uh, when it comes to insurance policies? It's because it's regulated. You know, every industry, every industry that is massively regulated, you have very few options. I mean, that's, that's just the reality of it, right? So when you unregulate an industry, when you, when you leave it free, you get lots of options, and you get, you get price competition, and you get, to, you get to look around, and you get to, uh, you get to choose, and you get to shop, and you get to do all these things. But, but when it is a... Uh, a regulated industry, the government shrinks the number of options because everybody ha- can only provide a product, can only provide a product that fits the regulations. So they are limited choices. Is this bill by the Republicans going to change that? No, not at all. Nothing about this bill is going to change that because in spite of the fact that some senators were quiet, that in order to vote for a bill, you know, Senator Lee being one of them, right, uh, said, you know, we won't vote for a bill unless you de- you get rid of all the insurance regulations that Obamacare places, placed on insurance companies. Did that, did that matter, right? No. The, uh, the, the, the Republican bill doesn't reduce those regulations. This is why Senator Lee has said he will not vote for this bill. Now he's still leaving himself an out, so he still might land up voting for the bill. But he said at least, you know, he demanded that these provisions be included, the elimination regulations, and and they're not doing it. They're not doing it. Uh, Are subsidies, have they taken out all the subsidies? No. They've just jiggled around and they've changed the subsidies. 
Great. Um, have they, uh, you know, have they, have they reduced Medicaid? Yeah, from 2025 on by a tiny little margin. You know, they kind of are block granting it to the states, but kind of not. They've done nothing. Nothing. Obamacare is going to be a little different. Yes, uh, they've done what Republicans are very good at. What are Republicans good at? What is every Republican in, in you know, in, in recent history at least, maybe in all time, what do they always campaign on? What do they always live up to? What do they always do? This is the only thing they actually get done. Cut taxes, except for uh, Bush Sr., who raised taxes in spite of Read My Lips. He campaigned on cutting taxes. He just didn't do it, right? So they cut taxes. And, and indeed, they're going to cut taxes from the Obamacare bill. And, and that's good. I'm all for cutting taxes. Cool, cut taxes. That's great. But Obamacare was never about predominantly about taxes. It's about choice in health care. It was about insurance. It was about you know, redistribution of wealth because they're not cutting the subsidies to, to low-income people or, or even to the insurance companies. So where does the money come from? So they're going to cut the taxes in Obamacare. Then they're going to still need the money, and the money's going to have to come from general revenues, which mean from taxes. I mean, the government doesn't have a magical place where they go to get the money to pay for the goodies that they want to give us all. At the end of the day, everything the government spends has to be raised through, yes, taxes. So they're very good at cutting taxes, and, and, and this bill cuts taxes all over the place. And, and I'm all for that. Look, I'm, you know, the, the ridiculous taxes, taxes on medical devices, taxes on tanning salons, taxes on all kinds of industries and all kinds of things. Uh, if, you, if you make more than, I think, 250000 there's a special Medicare tax. So there's taxes, taxes, taxes. I'm all good with cutting and eliminating those. But I thought, I thought what Republicans actually promised, what Republicans actually said they would do is repeal Obamacare. Eliminate Obamacare. Get rid of Obamacare. And they're not. And, and look, this is completely consistent with Trump. Trump doesn't want to eliminate Obamacare. He doesn't want to repeal Obamacare. He never has wanted that. He has constantly said, no, 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 I, you know, we need something compassionate. We need, you know, we'll get to this compassion stuff in a minute. We need something compassionate. We need, we need a compromise. You know, Australia has a wonderful health care system better than ours. Australia, by the way, has socialized health care, single-payer, universal health care. That's, that's Trump. That's what Trump has pushed for. Single payer universal health care. So he can't do that with Republicans having the House and Senate. So he wants Obamacare. Trump has never opposed Obamacare, which is it's just fascinating to me that the electorate, Republicans out there, grassroots, are letting Republicans get away with this. I, I don't see I don't see people upset. I don't see people demonstrating against Republicans on this Obamacare stuff. I don't see a demand to repeal. When Republicans go home, when Republicans go home this summer, are you guys going to go out there and demonstrate and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and tell them you're not going to vote for them unless they actually repeal Obamacare? I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't see the grassroots effort. When, when Obama was around, that was a big thing for the grassroots. We, you know, we're going to repeal Obamacare. It was a big push. It was a big push. Right? It's gone now. Somehow, all is gone from there, right? Because now the Republicans can actually do something, and they won't. So, so I want to discuss why. Why fundamentally, other than they're just cowards. Uh, what is it about Obamacare? What is it about Republicans? What is it about you, the voters? Make it impossible to appeal Obamacare. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the Ron Brooks Show. We'll be right back after these messages. Clear. Selling author, prolific media contributor, PhD in finance. This is the Yaron Book Show, the Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. 
while enjoying family game night, while ordering your venti soy no whip latte, while photoshopping wedding pictures. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. Hi there, it's Doc, Chris, and Cal from the Morning Blaze. Podcasts. 100 Days of Trump, because it's been an exciting 100 days. And on-demand programming. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of 40 Acres and a Fool here on the Blaze Radio Network. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Attention. This is a public notice from Citizens Disability. If you are one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits from Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, Citizens Disability can help. You'll be given an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, and deal with Social Security. Best of all, there is no fee until you receive your benefits. We only get paid if you win your case. To get started with your free no-obligation consultation, call 800-504-1636. That's 800-504-1636. There are a vast number of conditions that can make you eligible for disability benefits, many that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call Citizens Disability today. Again, that's 800-504-1636. 800-504-1636. That's Citizens Disability. 800-504-1636. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind? 60 till we come back. No medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. 30. The Morning Blaze with Doc Thompson. Coming up in the next program, I've got new numbers on procrastination to tell you about. We'll talk a little NASCAR. The Senate Republicans are selling out conservatives with Obamacare 2.0. I'll tell you all about that. And how's it been going since marijuana has been legalized in certain areas in certain states? Well, we'll explain coming up on the next program. The Morning Blaze, weekday morning, 6 to 9 Eastern, on the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Yaron Brook Show. All right, you know, you know the special election in Georgia that was held uh, a, a few uh, few days ago, I guess, and uh, Republicans were really everybody was really happy because Republicans won, in, in spite of the, a, a significant challenge by the Democrats and all the money spent. And I actually wish Republicans had lost. I mean, they got to get a message here. They got to get a message that unless they actually do what they promised to do, unless they actually live up to the principles they claim claim to believe in, that they're not going to win elections. I mean. If I want socialized health care, if I want single payer, if I want Obamacare, then I'll vote for Democrat. I thought Republicans were an alternative to that. But I think what we're learning and what we should have learned decades ago, decades ago, is that there's very very little difference between these two political parties when it comes to these fundamental issues about our economic rights there is very little difference between, you know, the core of the two political parties. Yeah, the, 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 the nutty people on the left want single payer. But I have a feeling now that among Republicans, single payer is gaining traction. Certainly, you know, Trump seemed to suggest that at least he believes single payer is a good solution because, look, he praised the system Australia has and he's praised 
other single payer systems as well. Okay, if you want to get in the conversation, uh, give us a call. 888-900-3393. 888-900-3393. And during the break, I heard in the advertising that I have a PhD in finance, which is actually true. So you can call with finance questions, but no investment. I don't give investment advice. I do not do that. Uh, 888-900-3393. Uh, you know, if, if you're calling, let's try to keep it on Obamacare for now, just because that's what we're talking about. Um, I know uh, I've got a call. I've got J.J. on the line from Palm Springs. He wants to talk about something different. I'm going to get you, J.J., I promise, and actually a little later in this segment, but um, but I'm, I'm going to try to stay on topic. It's so easy to get me diverted away from topics because I like to talk about so many different things. But call 888-900-3393. What do you think? Why is it? Why is it? The Republicans cannot, not just won't, cannot, I believe cannot and will not repeal Obamacare. That, that there's something in him, and there's something in the electorate, there's something among the people who vote for Republicans that makes it impossible for them to actually go for free market in health care, actually go for a true free market. Let me, let me give you some examples that are not related directly to Obamacare, but, but basically constitute the same principle. During the Great Depression, during the Great Depression, the FDR passed a lot of new um, laws that basically allowed for a massive redistribution of wealth in America, whether it was Social Security, the beginnings of a variety of different welfare programs, uh, huge, you know, uh, the beginnings of the American welfare state. There was no welfare state. And Social Security, by the way, is welfare. And if you don't believe that, call me up and let's argue the point. But Social Security is pure welfare. FDR passed all these, and the Democrats passed all these. And what did Republicans say at the time? Oh, when we get when we get the House and Senate, and when we get the presidency, we're going to repeal it. We're going to repeal all those things that were done by FDR. Big government. We don't believe in that big government. We're going to privatize the Tennessee, you know, whatever authority. We're going to we're going to you know we even going to privatize Social Security. There was talk about that. We're going to repeal all this stuff because this is bad stuff. This is. This goes against the principles on which this country is based. We want free markets. Okay, so when they won the presidency under Eisenhower and later under Nixon or whatever, did they do anything? No. No, they didn't repeal a thing. Indeed, uh, uh, Republicans are often the ones who are strongest advocates for saving Social Security, saving the welfare state. Okay, then in the 60s, we got the war in poverty. We got Medicare. We got Medicaid. We got uh, welfare, real welfare, massive redistributions of wealth. And at the time, Republicans were opposed to all of it. Ronald Reagan, go, go find this YouTube video of Ronald Reagan, 1964, uh, during the Goldwater campaign, uh, you know, fight, uh, arguing against Medicare. He was great. He made a moral case against Medicare. Medicare. Not Obamacare. Medicare. And the Democrats passed it anyway, and the Republicans said, okay, when we, when we get the presidency, when we get, you know, we'll repeal it. We'll shrink it. And Ronald Reagan, you know, he was the guy who made the case against Medicaid. He was going to become president one day, right? He would do it. He was going to repeal it, or, or, or at least shrink it, or at least moderate it, or do something. Reduce the involvement of government in health care, in welfare, in redistribution of wealth. What did he do? What did any of them do? What did Nixon do? What did any of them do? Nothing. Nothing. Again, Republicans today are the biggest advocates for preserving Medicare, saving Medicare. You know, one of the complaints against Obamacare was it was weakening Medicare. So this is not new. This is not new. Republicans always fold on these issues. They never, never, ever actually on anything to do with welfare, on anything to do with things like health care and redistribution of wealth, they never, ever, ever move us in a positive direction. They might slow down the growth of the programs, maybe not even that. Think George W. Bush passed Part D of Medicare. Part D of Medicare was the biggest expansion of the welfare state since Johnson. A Republican. With the Republican Senate and a Republican House, they could have done whatever they wanted. They could have completely reorganized Medicare. They could have passed private health care reform. No, 
Instead of that, they expanded the welfare state. That's Republicans. So I go back to the question of why. Why do they do this? Why can't they? Why can't they? You know, actually make these changes. Okay, we've got we've got uh, Russell and and JJ. I will get to you. I promise. But we <laughs> we got Russell from Virginia, who wants to you know is arguing Republicans and Democrats are the same party. Hey Russell, how's it going? Russell, are you there? Hello. Hey, there you are. I can hear you now. Oh, okay, awesome. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Talk up. Speak up. Uh, so, it's like I was saying, is that they're essentially one party now. I, I see, honestly, at this point, I see no difference between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And I feel like this is something uh, people have been saying for a long time, that there's, there's Democrats in the Republican Party, but there's no Republicans in the Democratic Party. So, at this, at this point, I think, I think we might as well just give... Uh, just let it fail. I, I think you're right. I, I, I think, I think. well, but if, if we let Obamacare fail, what happens? We get single payer. Because you're right. They're both the same party, oh, yeah. particularly when it comes to these kind of social issues. And there'll be a coalition of what they'll call moderate Republicans and Democrats. And they'll come together and they'll give us socialized health care. I mean, that's the solution, right? The solution is to get rid of Obamacare in the name of not free market health care, which is what I would advocate for and what Republicans on occasion have promised. But instead, give us what Democrats have wanted for the last 100 years. They've wanted it since the days of FDR, which is single-payer, right. universal health care, run by the government, complete socialized medicine, with maybe a private option for the wealthy, but the rest of us are screwed, right? Right. That's what we're going to get. And, and I think you're right. I think the differences between the Democrats and Republicans on these core issues are zero. There are no differences. And the question, again, is why? And, and, and I think more than that. I think it's the American people are not for free market medicine or not for co- completely repealing Obamacare. I think our, our, right. our senators and House members respond to what you guys want. And do you guys really want, really want free market health care? And my, my conclusion is, no, people don't really want free market health care. I don't know about you, Russell. I want free market health care. Oh, I do too. Yeah, but I don't think... I don't think a significant number of Americans do. And I think, uh, I think that, that our politicians are responding to us, to what we are demanding, what we want. And we keep electing them anyway. So why, you know, why rock the boat? 30. Why upset people? All right. Uh, sure. Thanks, Russell. Thanks for the call. Uh, we we have to go here. We've got, we've got a hard break. And uh, you're listening to your own book show uh, where we're going to get to the fundamental cause of why Republicans and Democrats are not that different. We'll be right back after the break. Clear? You're listening to The Chris Salcedo Show. Part of Generation Blaze. On the Blaze Radio Network. You had the wrong show in that ad. Yeah. It was a wrong bump on there. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While investing in Bitcoin, while making America great again, while playing the back nine. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. Political correctness blinds us to reality and makes us so stupid. Podcasts. This is the Freedom's Disciple Podcast. And on-demand programming. Hello and welcome to ILTV's Zion News on the Blaze Radio Network. All at theblaze.com slash radio. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. 
If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6951. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind in your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. Sixty to the comeback. A few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands. Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka. Here's the deal. This weekend, I want you to try and do pretty much nothing. Just relax and enjoy your friends and family. I'll be gathering all the news, all the crazy stories, and then Monday at noon Eastern, we will reassemble, we'll take on the world and the week and the run-up to Independence Day. It's going to be a lot of patriotism and some crazy stuff, too. Be here. Pure Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. The Huron Brook Show. All right, here we go. And, and uh, you know, so we're talking about Obamacare. We're talking about why is it that when it comes to these social programs or these social, any of these social programs, any kind of welfare programs, any redistribution programs, Republicans are not only never actually repeal them, never actually roll them back, but indeed when they have control, they actually expand them, Part D of Medicare being maybe the best illustration of that under George W. Bush, the largest expansion of the welfare state since Johnson, since the Democrats controlled it all. And I wouldn't be surprised if when we look back at the Trump administration, we will see a vast expansion ultimately of the welfare state, of the redistribution state. Certainly we will not see, that is clear, a repeal of Obamacare and, and you know, Trump has told us he doesn't want to repeal Obamacare. He's actually called 
various versions of the House and Senate bills cruel, mean. It's called the mean. And now the Democrats are using the word mean. And uh, uh, Trump's upset because, hey, wait a minute. That was my word. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that, right? I don't know what to do with that. All right, we, we, got, we got a couple of callers. We got JJ and Slav, but they're both going to take me a little off topic. So I'm going to hold off on them. So, you know, be patient, guys. I promise I will get to you. But, um, but if you want in on the conversation about why Republicans are so impotent, impotent when it comes to appealing any kind of social programs, um, 888-900-3393. 888-900-3393. See, I believe, I believe in free markets. I believe in free markets not only because I know they work, and I know we'd get better, cheaper service. We'd get better, cheaper health care. We could have the best health care. Well, I was going to say in the world, but you probably get the best health care in the world today if you have insurance. Uh, but but we could get 10 times better. We, I mean, it's unimaginable how good our health care would be, how cheap it could be. Technology and markets drive prices down, drive quality up in every single field. Except in health care. So you have to ask what's going on in health care. Well, then the regulations, the controls, the subsidies, the fact that 51 cents before Obamacare, 51 cents of every dollar spent on health care was spent by government, by government. Now, you could say this is just about power. You know, Republicans want power. They want to control our health care decisions. They want to control our lives, just like the Democrats want to control our lives. They want to be able to manipulate the industry. They want to, you know, get all those dollars from the insurance companies that come groveling before them, uh, lobbying. They, they, they're cronies. And you could say this is all about cronyism. But, it, but I don't believe that. I don't think it's about cronyism. I think it's much deeper than that. Because it's not just our politicians who oppose the free market in, in medicine. It's not just the politicians who actually want to repeal it. It's the voters. The voters don't want to repeal Obamacare. Not really. Not when you get to the nitty gritty. You want it, You want no pre-existing conditions? You want a real free market insurance? Do you trust a real free market in insurance with developed products that solve the pre-existing condition issue? Or do you want? Or do you want? the government to protect you if you have pre-existing conditions. I bet you most of you are thinking, oh, no, I want the government. I don't trust those insurance companies. They're going to screw me. I don't trust markets. That's the attitude of most Americans, an overwhelming, I'd say, majority of Americans, and that's what Republicans are feeding off of. They are responding to what you, the voters, want, and you, the voters, don't want a complete repeal of Obamacare and real, real free market in health care. I remember uh, during the Tea Party era, Right, the signs that the Tea Party people don't tread on me and shrink government and in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and individual rights, and then a big banner saying, "Keep your hands off of my Medicare." Look, Medicare is socialized medicine for people over sixty-five. Medicare is single-payer universal health care for people over sixty-five. If it's good for people over sixty-five, what about people over fifty-five? And if it's good for people over 55, what about people who are 15? What about babies? Why not? Why not just have single payer? Why not just have the government take it all over? That's what people want. If they want, if you are for Medicare, if you believe that Medicare is the solution for health care for seniors, then you are for Obamacare. Then you are for socialized medicine. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have socialized medicine just for some people. Everybody over 65. And then think you're going to win the argument about people under 65 having free market health care. I remember during the discussions about Obamacare, the chairman of the Republican Party uh, put out an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal saying, we're opposed to Obamacare. We think Obamacare is a government takeover of health care. This is socialized medicine. This is terrible. We're against all of it. We're against all of it. And one of the things we don't like about Obamacare is it, is it hurts Medicare because we, the Republican Party, are committed to the preservation of Medicare forever. So the next day I'm listening, I, I, you know, when I, when I drive to work, or when I'm just driving, I listen to NPR. I like to know what the enemy's thinking, right? So I listen to NPR. NPR is very biased, very leftist. But it's also very intellectual, and, and they run stories nobody else runs. And they're smart. They're smart. So they have him on the show. 
They have him on the show, and what, and 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 they have him on the show, and the thing they say is, look, how can you be for Medicare, which is socialized medicine, universal health care for people over sixty five, and against Obamacare, which is expands, med- you know, coverage through the government for all these new people, and he had no answer. He couldn't. He was living a complete and utter contradiction. You either for markets or you're for socialism, you can't have a bit of each. That is unstable, that'll go in one direction or the other. Healthcare in the United States today is a mixture. Lots of socialism, over 50% of every dollar spent is spent by the government, a little bit of freedom. That little bit of freedom has shrunk under Obamacare and is going to shrink further and further and further, unless you're willing to redo the entire package. And nobody is willing to do that. Why? Well, because we don't trust markets. We don't believe markets will work. And because we have a moral failing, in my view, our moral code, the moral code we've been taught by everybody, by our preachers, by our mothers, by our philosophers, by everybody on talk radio and everyone, our moral code says that somebody else's need is your responsibility. You have to take care of people who are in your need. You have. You're your brother's keeper. Hey, you're your brother's keeper, and your brother doesn't have health care. It's your responsibility to provide it. And since in the marketplace we don't provide for everybody, then we need, we need the government to help us out, force us a little bit, use its coercive power to help us care for the people that morally we're supposed to care for, the needy, the people who don't have insurance, our brothers and sisters all over the world out there. This is the morality that says your life doesn't matter. You might be responsible, but you are morally responsible for everybody around you. And if they're not responsible, then you have to find a way to take care of them. It's on you. This is the morality The morality of altruism. Altruism doesn't mean just being nice to people. Altruism means that your moral responsibility in life is other people's well-being. Not your own. Other people's well-being. Morality means that it's your moral responsibility to take care of anybody who has a need that is not being fulfilled. And there are lots of people out there who have a need that's not being fulfilled. And it's your responsibility to take care of it. And if you don't do it, the government will step in to help you out. And you'll vote for it because you feel guilty about the fact that there are all these people who are uninsured. It's our altruism. It's our morality of need. The morality that says the need is a claim on us, which allows us to keep going and going and going. All right, we'll talk more about this morality of self-sacrifice, about this morality of altruism. They invite you as destroying America and suddenly preventing Republicans from doing what's right when we come back. After this break, you're listening to the Iran Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. Clear for the military veteran and radical for capitalism. It's the Iran Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. And culture. Something that the great Catholic writer C.S. Lewis wrote. Ready for download now or later. Tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. For those who torment us for our own good will torment us without end. For they do so with the approval of their own conscience. Check out the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show at theblaze.com slash radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. 
Attention, Zarelto and Pradaxa users. If you or a loved one has taken Zarelto or Pradaxa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Zarelto and Pradaxa are prescribed blood thinners used to prevent blood clots and protect people from strokes. If you have taken Zarelto or Pradaxa and been hospitalized for internal bleeding, call now. 800-630-6720. Serious bleeding has led to numerous cases of hospitalization and death. If you or Hey, Yaron, could you spell um, the word altruism? Is that is altruism. that the word that you mentioned? Altruism. altruism? The substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Call 800-630-6720. That's 800-630-6720. Again, 800-630-6720. Okay. Thank you. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injuryhelpdesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Bill O'Reilly on the Glenn Beck Program. Theresa May. Uh, What do you want to know about? I want to know what do you think is going to happen with Brexit? Brexit is going to happen. Now, as far as Mrs. May, she comes across to me as a, a rather uh, boring person. You know, hey, I head out and you must sit down and shut up. <laughs> Listen to wow. Bill O'Reilly. I mean, Listen, he is, he is, put, he is, he is his hair cutting down. loose. He's got that one hair on the top and yeah. he's letting it all the way down. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly on the Glenn Beck Program. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. 60 to a comeback. Medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. America Now with Buck Sexton. If you read the headlines, I am not exaggerating. He has destroyed the planet. The world is going to end because of Trump. That's what they're telling us. Every night, Buck is in the Freedom Hut. Welcome to the Freedom Hut. Breaking down the important issues. The government needs to do a better job. It's either official and out there or it's not. America Now. America Now. With Buck Sexton. We'll do what we think is right, even if it's painful or annoying or difficult. 7 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. So this is the only show on the planet where altruism is going to be blamed for the problems in the world. And it is. The idea that your life, your moral responsibility in your life is to other people. The idea that the needs of other people are moral claim against you. The idea that the fact that other people don't have health insurance should make you feel guilty. That idea is destroying America. That is not the founder's conception. And that is not the moral ideal at the heart of America. This is not. We move far away from the idea that each of us has an unalienable right to pursue our own happiness. Only Ayn Rand, only Ayn Rand, in modern times at least, has argued that your moral purpose in life is not to serve, 
It's not to, to, to sacrifice for other people. Your mom purpose in life is to make your life the best that it can be. It's to flourish as a human being. It's to benefit yourself. It's to be self-interested in a rational way using your reason. It means that if you want health insurance, then figure out a way how to get health insurance. Restructure your finances so that you can afford health insurance. And if you can't, then lobby heavily and, and demand from your representatives to get the regulatory burden of the government off of insurance companies so that they can offer you a product that's cheap enough so you can afford. But don't, don't ever expect other people to give it to you just because you need it. That's not America. That's Europe. That's socialism. But that's not what America is about. America is about self-reliance. It's about taking responsibility for your own life, your own decisions, your own priorities, your own finances, your own health care. But soon, we're going to have universal health care. And you won't have to worry. You won't have to worry. Some bureaucrat will make all your health care decisions for you. You'll fill out a form, and they'll decide what kind of treatment you get, and they'll decide when you'll die, and they'll decide whether you're worth investing in when you have cancer or whatever. That's the world we're heading. Instead of individuals making decisions for themselves based on their own values, based on their own happiness, if you're 25, if you're 25, then yeah, you should have health insurance. But if you decide not to have health insurance because you think you're invincible and you think you, know, you don't want to spend the money on that and you're not prioritizing that, why should I pay for your health care? Why should I pay for your health insurance? You're making stupid decisions. Live with them. It's not my moral responsibility to fix the mistakes that you make. And the problem is that we as a society think it is. Oh, my God, 25-year-olds don't have insurance. We, we can't let them. Can't anything bad happen to them? We have to pay for their health care. What happens if they don't have health care? They might die. Well, I mean, with all due respect, it's not my responsibility if they die. They're the ones who didn't do it. Now, I believe they wouldn't die because there'll be charity and hospitals would cover them. And then they should put a lien on their income so that they pay for it. You don't get to live off of other people just because you are making irresponsible decisions. But we believe that we need to take care of each other. I mean, we, we're socialists. Look, deep down, at the core, we're socialists. Okay, I'm going to take a quick call from uh, Yehuda in Minneapolis uh, because uh, he wants to talk about this topic. And Slav and JJ, wait on the line. We're going to get to you after the next break. But Yehuda wants to talk about Obamacare. So go ahead, Yehuda. Uh, what's up? I'm back to the border, and I was a Tea Party guy, been a part of the Tea Party, and I'm supporting President Trump. I don't know why you're against the health care bill. we got to get Obamacare out of there. And we got to have a heart because this is why Republicans lose, because they say we don't have a heart and we want to throw people you know, off the street. So this is a good bill because it just is a little bit of help for people who need it. And it's not socialized care. I don't know why you're not supporting Trump. We need to get rid of Obamacare. And, and you're just, you know, your number Trumpers are just no for everything. This would be a good thing. And what's wrong with having just a little bit of help for people? Who Two minutes. That's the Christian that is a Christian thing to do. And, it is, you know, it is. And, and it, it you know, and I'm going to oppose the Christian thing to do because I think it is wrong to do it. It is wrong. It's not a politician's money to spend as they see fit. It's not theirs to give away. It's mine. If I want to help people, I get to help people. But we can't use the course of, we shouldn't use the course of nature of government. We shouldn't use force to take money from some people to give it to others. And look, if, if the House and the Republicans and the House and Senate and, and if Donald Trump wanted to actually repeal Obamacare, I'd be all for it. But they themselves admit this isn't a repeal. This is a rejuggling. They themselves admit that it would be mean if we didn't take care, if we didn't have a heart. No, politicians should not have a heart. You heard it here first. Politicians should not have a heart. The only job of government is to protect our rights. The only job of government is to protect us from criminals and fraudsters and bad guys and terrorists and foreign invaders, something they don't do. It's not their job to decide who's needy from who to take and to, from, to, to whom to give. 
It's not their job to sacrifice us. Now, I don't think you should sacrifice anyway, but it's certainly not the responsibility of other people to tell you when you should and shouldn't sacrifice and force you to do it. I believe we are all individuals capable. Thanks, Judah. Thanks for, thanks for the call. We're all individuals capable of taking care 30. of ourselves. We all need to have that moral responsibility to take care of ourselves. That's what morality is about. Living the best life we can live as individuals. Government needs to butt out. Needs to stay out of my health care decisions. Needs to get out of the business of health care, of insurance, of all of that. Time for 100%, 100% free market health care. You're listening to Five, your one book show. Four, we'll be back three, after two, these break. One. Clear? If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While swimming with sharks, while darning socks, while hacking the mainframe. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. Chris Salcedo, welcome to the show on the Blaze. Podcast. This is Pure Opelka, the early edition on the Blaze Radio Network. And on-demand programming. Welcome to the Lawrence Jones Show. I can't thank you enough for joining the program. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Lost the audio, I assume that's okay. One took Zorelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zorelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813. Immediately, that's 800-733-9813. Page Publishing is is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 8 800-733-9813 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-733-9813. That's 800-733-9813. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813 for your free author submission kit. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services at 800-600-1645. That's 800-600-1645. 800-600-1645. This is the Blaze Radio Network at theblaze.com slash radio. No sound again. Yeah, uh, it's the log didn't play a spot like it was supposed to, so I'm trying okay. to figure that out. Here's the latest. I'm Chuck Carroll. Five GOP senators say they oppose the current health care legislation as it stands now. Only two can break rank and still have the bill passed. Among those criticizing the measure, Maine Senator Susan Collins. The Senate bill is going to have more impact on the Medicaid program than even the House bill. Collins tells ABC's This Week that elderly residents will be hit particularly hard by the current draft. The Maine Republican also plans to amend the bill to restore funding to Planned Parenthood, money stripped from the current draft. 
President Trump also talking health care this morning on Fox and Friends. He's calling for bipartisan effort. It would be so great if the Democrats and Republicans could get together, wrap their arms around it, and come up with something that everybody's happy with. It's so easy. But we won't get one Democrat vote, not one. Trump also responding to a Washington Post report outlining the Obama administration's slow reaction to intelligence that Russia was attempting to interfere in last year's elections. Trump says Obama knew about Vladimir Putin's plans for months and did nothing. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff also criticizing the former administration. I think the Obama administration should have done a lot more when it became clear that not only was Russia intervening, but it was uh, being directed at the highest levels of the Kremlin. Schiff there on CNN State of the Union. And an investigation is underway in California after authorities incorrectly identified a dead body. 82-year-old Frank J. Kerrigan thought he buried his son in Fountain Valley, but 11 days after the funeral, a friend called to inform him that his son was still alive. A short time later, Frank M. Kerrigan got on the phone and warmly greeted his father. The Orange County Register reports the coroner's office has apologized and is now reviewing identification procedures. Meanwhile, the identity of the man buried in the grave remains a mystery. That's the latest. I'm Chuck Carroll. Rebuild or replace transmission, $3,200. Anti-lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild or replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your manufacturer's warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. Get protection for covered repairs with a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty. Unlike other companies, with Toco, there's no down payment, and the monthly payments are really affordable. Not sure how long you're keeping your car? At Toco, you can pay as you go. Keep your hard-earned cash and call Toco Warranty right now at 800-219-6614 to save big money on covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle, but for about the cost of a tank of gas per month, a TOCO plan has your back on expensive covered car repairs. Monthly payments are very affordable. Get your free quote now. Call TOCO at 800-219-6614. That's 800-219-6614. 800-219-6614. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Missouri and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warrantech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer or dealership. Visit TOCO warranty.com for complete terms and conditions. Direct from the historic newsreels of Selznick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second biography. Few people know that the beautiful Daryl Hannah was almost named Daryl Hannah Barbera because of the doink, doink, doink noise that was made when her parents pushed at her soft spot when she was a baby. The star of the big screen and mugshots across the country starred in such classics as Blade Runner, Splash, Steel Magnolias, and as the one-eyed assassin in Kill Bill. In 2013, she revealed when she was a child, medical professionals recommended that she be institutionalized and medicated, which explains her dating Neil Young. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. Hey, this is Jeff Fisher. You know me from the Jeff Fisher Radio Show. Airs live Saturdays, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern on Blaze Radio. And don't forget about the iHeart Radio app. Now, I know there are times when you can't listen live or, like so many others, want to listen again. I'm here to tell you there are so many ways to download and take me with you. There's no excuse. SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play Music. To listen when and where you want to the Jeff Fisher Radio Show. Show. From theblaze.com slash radio. Non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. 
If you're struggling with 32 to come back. Consolidated credit programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. The Yaron Brook Show starts now. So, in the previous hour, we talked about Obamacare and why, why, why Republicans cannot repeal it, and indeed why most Americans don't want Republicans to repeal it, including, I believe, most Republicans. Most Republicans do not want the repeal of Obamacare. Why? Because they believe it's their moral responsibility to care for their neighbor. And they are quite happy for the government to force them to do it. Because it's more convenient. It's easier. Why deal with the neighbor directly when you can have the government step in and deal indirectly? So let me try to sum up the point this way. Let's say your neighbor gets sick and he hasn't got insurance. And... You know, bad stuff is going to happen. And they come to you, and they, and so my point is, your neighbor only has two choices, in a sense. They can come to you, and they can ask for your help. Look, man, I, I, I was irresponsible. I didn't buy insurance. I'm screwed now. Things are really bad. Help me out. Can you help me get the health care that I need, the treatment that I need? Otherwise, I'm going to die, or my ch- child's going to die, or whatever, right? And then you get to decide whether to help or not. And in most cases, people would help, but it would be dependent on your own values. Do I have the money? Do my kids need the money right now? Am I using the money to pay for my kid's school, which is more important to me than my neighbor's health? It is, by the way. My kid's schooling, my kid's health is more important to me than your health. That's the reality. I'm a self-interested person. My kids, I love my kids more than I love your kids. I don't really love your kids. Like them, maybe. Maybe they're okay, but I don't love them. So when I decide whether to help you or not, it's going to be in the context of my life. What? How much money do I have? What other demands are there on that money? How big of an emergency is it? And I might say no to you. Now the question is, does me saying no to my neighbor about helping him out in order to, even to save his life, I'm not willing to pay to to give up my entire checking account in order for somebody else to save somebody's life who I don't know and I don't care about. Not willing to do it. I'm self-interested. And I believe in the morality of self-interest. I believe this is right. We should all be like this. And the neighbor should have thought about this, should have invested in his own long-term well-being by buying insurance or saving or whatever. So he doesn't get a right because I said no to pull out a gun and steal my money. Everybody says, oh, no, that's theft. That's bad. Okay, see, he doesn't do that. What he does is he goes to the neighborhood and he gets all the neighbors to vote to steal my money. And somehow that's okay. That's democracy. In democracy, it's okay to steal my money. And, and this is what's so, so, so horrible here, right? Is that because, because somebody is needy, because my neighbor's needy, we skip over the phase of his asking. Because we assume some of us will say no, legitimately so in my view. And we go straight to, we're going to force you to help him out. We're going to basically pull out a gun and force you. You were responsible. You bought insurance. You took care of your family. Well, you're going to pay the price for that responsibility. You are going to sacrifice you. And most moral codes, including the Christian moral code, and I'm you know, I'm going to be a critic of Christianity in this show, um, and, and Judaism and Islam and all religion. The moral code is going to say, it's your moral responsibility to help him. You, you, you can't not. And if we're going to force you, then you just have to accept it. Because your life doesn't matter. Your health doesn't matter. What matters is his health. Your moral responsibility in life, this is altruism. This is what the morality of altruism means. Your moral responsibility in life is to help other people. And the more needy they are, the more you should help them. I say no. And it's time Americans stood up and said, no. I want to take care of myself. 
I'll take care of the people I want to take care of. Don't burden me. Don't burden me. Don't put on my shoulders. The responsibility of taking care of people I have not chosen to take care of. My moral responsibility is only to the people I choose. And I choose based on my values, based on my own life, based on my own happiness and success. You only get one life. You only get one shot at this. Make the most of it. Live for yourself, not for your neighbor. As nice as the neighbor is. Your life is not his. You don't mortgage your life to him because he has needs, because he has wants, because he has not been responsible, or even if you had an accident. I'm not saying we don't help. I'm saying you help when it's in your self-interest to help. You help when it's a benevolence. You help when your neighbor says thank you because he appreciates the fact that you're helping, that you don't owe him. And yes, Americans have always been benevolent. Indeed, people who are free, People who pursue their own happiness. People who are focused on their own well-being and who are responsible for themselves are the most benevolent people in the world. But you do it out of benevolence, not out of duty. Out of benevolence, not out of moral duty. When you do it out of moral duty, that's bad. It's bad for you. And and, 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 And importantly, it gives, it opens that window for government to step in and say, What's your moral duty? We're just helping you out to exercise your moral duty. And if we don't, bad things are going to happen and you should feel guilty for it. All right. Um, I'm going to quickly go to JJ, uh, JJ from Palm Springs, because he's been waiting on the line for so long, even though it's not related to this topic. Go ahead, JJ. Ask your question. I don't know if I have an answer. Oh, all right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, uh, Yaron, for having the ability to make such a complex topic and subject so simple and commonsensical. I don't know why people don't get this stuff. But yeah, I we'll find it. out if it's, it's so if it's simple and commonsensical by, by, by whether people turn, my, turn the radio off when they hear me and whether we can convince anybody out there. We will see. We will see. I'll tell you, the first time I heard you, I felt like turning it off. I was a little pissed off. But, <laughs> you know, after That's a while, it, it started nagging at me, and I, and I started thinking, yeah, you know, he might have a point on that last thing he said, and eventually I came around. So, Oh, that's a I great hope, story. I, I appreciate I think there's that. hope. Yep. Last week, you talked on your show about the importance of teaching, about how kids aren't taught yep. history, and even adults aren't. Yep. And you seem to know a lot about history, about the founding fathers, and just Western history in general. And so uh, I, I see my kids now, and I see the, the, the stuff that they're being taught. Oh. It's very politicized. And I'm so, just wondering is, if there's a good... A resource or a good place to get resources where I can start teaching my kids I mean, proper I, history. You know, I'll, the right. I'll investigate that because because it's a great question and I don't have a simple answer. And partially because it would take a lot of work to figure it out, particularly for kids. Um, but but let me do some research on that and get back to you in a future show. But let me tell you this unequivocally: the stuff they're learning in school is not history. The stuff they're learning in school is to a large extent propaganda. Uh, you know, it, it, it was written by academics, and most of the academics in American schools, most of the people who, who write this history are, uh, are Marxists of, of various kinds and various forms. So you have most of the history today uh, in American history, for example, you know, simple. The Industrial Revolution is a huge, huge, huge part of Western civilization, a huge part of, 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 uh, of the success of America and the success of the West. And what do, what do the kids learn about it? Child labor. Oh, the poor, poor people. Oh, the pollution it caused. Oh, all these bad things. Without any context about the fact that before the Industrial Revolution, everybody was poor. And the Industrial Revolution is the only thing that brought us out of poverty. Without the context of the fact that before the Industrial Revolution, all kids worked. And indeed, it's the Industrial Revolution that got kids into a school because now parents could afford to send them to school. And on and on and on and on you go. And it's very difficult to find a textbook, for example, that appreciates the role, the, the unprecedented role, the, the magnificent role, the, just the beauty of the Industrial Revolution. It, it just doesn't exist because of the political, philosophical orientation of almost everybody who writes history, particularly for kids, unfortunately. So, so I, I'll do some research and try to find it, but... Uh, 
But you, what you got to do is, 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 I think ultimately you're going to have to find some adult books and you're going to have to present them to your kids in a way that they can understand them. I don't think you're going to find something written for kids that's going to do it right, or at least not one source that has it all. All right? Yeah, all right, I'm thanks okay for that. calling, Georgie. Really cool. appreciate it. Keep on listening, and you're listening to your own book show. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back, and we'll take some calls from Slav and from Matt. We'll be right back. Clear HD, author, media contributor. This is the Yaron Brooks Show, the Blaze Radio Network. Freedom's Disciple with Jonathan Dunn. It was popular to be down and hurt about America and American exceptionalism when Obama was in office. But now all of a sudden your guy is in power, whether it was George Bush or Donald Trump, all of a sudden you have this sense of optimism and the other side is freaking out. It's the same on the left. All of a sudden Donald Trump is one and the world is going to crumble. Freedom's Disciple with Jonathan Dunn. Available on demand anytime at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 436 0142. That's 800 436 0142. Direct from the historic newsreels of Nick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30 second biography. Bill Clinton's brother from another mother and member of the English Parliament, the funkadelic singer George Clinton was famous for putting nanoparticles of quantum physics into modern dance music with such super hits as Atomic Dog, Spooky Action at a Distance, and Schrodinger's Cat, which won for Best R&B Single in 1983 and was later re-released as General Tao's Chicken in your grocer's freezer. George Clinton was once rumored to have solved Einstein's unified field theory, but couldn't read his handwriting the next morning when he sobered up. It was at that point that George decided to give up the funk. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6951. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. 32, come back. It's the Chris Salcedo Show. Look at all the government goodies that people have gotten used to. And you can't take away the goodies the gov- that they've gotten used to because Americans, we all know, Americans deserve to have their crap paid for by somebody else. Everybody knows that, you know? I mean, this sir, first, that now it's, it's medical service. Pretty soon, everybody's going to have a right to have their lawn care paid for by their neighbor. The Chris Salcedo Show, weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. You're listening to the Yaron Brooks Show. So, my big point, my big point is your needs. I don't care how needy you are. I'm not a claim on my life. I'm not a claim on my wealth. I'm not a claim on my time. They're not a claim on the doctor's time either. Doctors, doctors should be able to negotiate their own prices, not be told by the government how much they can charge, which is what Medicare does. They should be able to negotiate with patients. We should be free. Now, 
let me be clear about Medicare. I don't, I don't want to scare any of you guys. I, I realize that a lot of you are paid in, and you expect to get something in return. And if you're 65, you're afraid, oh, your aunt's going to eliminate Medicare, and I'm going to die. Look, these things have to be phased out. Social Security, Medicare have to be phased out. I'd say over a generation or two, you phase them out completely to zero. There should be no Social Security. There should be no Medicare. You should save. What a concept. What a concept. Save for retirement. Take responsibility over your own life. Buy a lifelong insurance, which would be available in a free market. Phase it out. Phase it out. So most of you put your money in. You'll get some of it back. I don't think you should get all of it back. It was stolen from you a long time ago. And I don't see any reason why your kids and grandkids should be enslaved to paying you off because that's what would happen. Do you know that for every dollar you pay in Medicare taxes that you paid over your lifetime, you are likely to spend in Medicare four times more, $4 for every dollar you paid in. Where did the extra three come from? Not that the one was saved anyway. So where do those four come from? From your kids and grandkids. They're, they're Income is being taken from them by force in order to provide you with health care. How is that right? How is that moral? How is that just? Let's sacrifice the young for the sake of the poor. Let's screw the young. Let's make economic growth zero for them. Let's take their money and give it to old people so they can live six months longer. I mean, it's the, mo- the morality is completely upside down. Why are we doing this? Because the young, they're healthy. They, they've got a whole lifetime before them. The old, the needy, the, the sick. They're poor. They're dying. So we need to sacrifice the young for the sake of the old. That's what Social Security is. That's what Medicare is. And that's why until you are ready to talk about eliminating those programs, phasing them out, you cannot talk about doing away with Obamacare. It's the same principle. Obamacare did exactly the same thing. Sacrifice the young and the healthy for the sake of the middle-aged and, 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 and sick. Why? Why, is it, why do you get penalized for being young and healthy? Why do you get penalized for being old and healthy? Why do you get penalized for taking care of yourself? Why do you get penalized for buying insurance? Why do you get penalized for saving? But that's the system we live in because we believe in this altruistic morality that says, uh uh-uh, your responsibility in life is not to take care of yourself, not to live your own life, not to save, be responsible. Your moral responsibility, your, your, your purpose in life is to serve other people. Your purpose in life is to take care of the needy. The ideal is that all of us become other Teresas. I don't know who would actually build anything if we were all Mother Teresas. The, the entire Western civilization would collapse. The world would collapse into poverty, deprivation, hunger, and starvation. But I'm all ideal. Dictates we should. Mother Teresa becomes a saint the guys in, 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 in Silicon Valley, you guys who work for a living, who, who, who take care of your families, who work hard every day, who produce, who create, who build, you don't get sainthood. You don't get na- roads named after you. You don't get bridges named after you. But if we all became other Teresas, what would happen to the world? Collapse. Total, ultimate collapse. Destruction, poverty, and death. But that's the moral code we have to get rid of. We have to get rid of with all the implications that that entails. And if you keep listening to the show, we'll get to all the implications that that entails. All right, I want to go to, uh, let's see, Matt in Pennsylvania. Hi, Matt. You're on your own book show. What's up? Hi, you're on. Um, thanks for taking my call. Sure. I appreciate the uh, discussion that we're having today, the Sunday afternoon. Um, you know, kind of building on, on what you just said, and I think that was a great lead in, probably having some information on my call. I mean, the one question I've been bouncing around in my head is you say, why do our representatives say one thing and do another thing? Um, You know, just reading some articles, I look at the 115th Congress, and it's going to be one of the oldest in history, with the average age being 57 for the House, 61 for the Senate. Um, You look at Michigan, the 13th District, they have an 87-year-old representative for an average constituency of 35 years old. Um, And I kind of look at it in the context of, you know, the broader, the greatest generation, who was the parents of the current generation leading the country. And, you know, I look at my grandparents, you know, I'm 31 years old. I'm one of those dreaded millennials. You know, my wife and I both went to college, worked through college. We have two daughters now. We live in our own home. We pay a mortgage. We go yep. to work every day. Yep. Took, took boring um, careers, yep. nursing and accountant, and we're working our way through it. 
and I look out at the troubles that our country is facing and I look at, you know, kind of the base of the decision makers and, you know, do they have a vested interest in this? And is this really driving? Well, of course they do. Some look, of their yeah, I mean, I mean, look, Matt, the fact is that old people vote, young people don't. And when yep. young people vote, they vote stupid. They, they vote for Bernie Sanders. I mean, young people, millennials, overwhelmingly pro Bernie Sanders. So you have socialists among the young, and you have basically uh, 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 people who just want wealth to be redistributed in their, in their direction among the very old. And everybody in the middle is stuck, right? It doesn't matter what you think because these people outvote you. And, and they, you know, they, they're going to they're gonna get their programs passed at your expense. So age definitely plays a factor. You're not going to have a very old legislature and very old voters voting to dismantle Social Security and dismantle Medicare. That just is not going to happen, right? So, um, you know, you're 31, you're screwed. That I, yeah, I mean, I think that's the nutshell that I see our country in, and I think – I think that, that's but, the but answer it's, for we're just going to have to get through these next 15, 20 years. But it's not enough, right? Because the fact is that it's not like the other generations are better. And it's not like when your generation gets to be 65, you'll be willing to give up on Social Security and Medicare. It's the, and it's not like uh, young people have a better set of philosophical ideas. One of the reasons old people have a hard time dismantling the welfare state is because the older you get, the more riddled with guilt you get over your own success. So if you hold the wrong moral code, when you, who are being responsible all your life, as you get older, people will keep pointing out to you all the people in need and keep trying to use guilt on you to try to force you to help them. And guilt is a very powerful tool. And because of the, this morality of altruism, because of the morality of self-sacrifice, because of the morality that says that it's your moral responsibility to help those people, everybody feels guilty, and it, almost everybody feels guilty. And it's that guilt that they manipulate, that they use. So it's much more sophisticated than just old people get the money, so they vote for it. It's not just that they get the money. They also feel guilty about all the self-interested things they did through their life, and they, they're fine with taxes and regulations and controls mm -hmm. in order to appease their guilt in some way. Does that make sense? So it's, my yeah, point I mean, is I it's far more difficult that. than what you're suggesting to fix the problem because, because you have to go to the heart of the problem. You have to go to the core of the problem, which is this morality. And 31-year-olds, your generation of millennials, are just as guilty of altruism, are just as guilty of the morality of self-sacrifice as our 75-year-olds. You just have a different spin on it, and your spin, unfortunately, causes you to vote for Bernie Sanders. Well, I mean, I would, Not you I would say... The folks in my household voted for Donald Trump um, because we looked at the alternative. Yep. Um, we would have we would have much much rather voted for someone like Rand Paul. Yep. Um, I think that's kind of the ideal. Yeah, but you're unusual, right? Of, especially well, you no, have to I admit mean, you're unusual because Rand Paul didn't have a chance. Did not have a chance well, no, in this. I don't sixty in the group that watched the Twin Towers get attacked while we were in high school. Yep. Went to Iraq and Afghanistan. Yep. And you know, I have friends who don't have limbs, and I have friends who are dead. Yep. So I mean, I think there's, I think there's a misunderstanding of what the millennial group is. There's, there's the group that's coming out of college right now. Well, that's all gun ho, Bernie Sanders. Then there's the, the hardworking. Some of us went and sacrificed. Some of us stayed at home, came through a recession, went to college. I mean, the, I mean, Matt, workers. I have to cut you off because we're going to a break. But right. let me just say, I mean, 30. that is all fantastic. The fact is, though, that you guys are minority, and that that even within yep. your generation, uh, you're not a majority. But suddenly among Young people, if you take 18 to 40 as, as young, you're just a tiny minority. And, and what we need is to educate young people about how they are being sacrificed for the sake Ten. of the elderly, how they are being sacrificed and destroyed, and then how they need to become proponents Five. of free markets. All One. right, we have to take a break Three. here. Hard break. This Two. is the Iran Brooks Show. One. We'll be right back. You won't hear traditional Clear. political views here. This is the Yaron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While working on your car, while visiting your parole officer, okay, while so getting kicked off the United uh, Flight. 
pretty much any time. It's a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. I'll get the argument for someone who's committed identity theft to stay. Podcasts. We don't really get to complain about that, do we? Because we're doing this to ourselves. And on-demand programming. There's a lot to discuss today, America. Yet another terrorist attack. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may to a small portion of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. Four nine six seven. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800 553 4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation don't be a silent victim time is limited to file your claim call now for free information and a free consultation lines are open 24 7 call 800-553-4751 that's 800-553-4751 800-553-4751 you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation call 800-553-4751 51 now. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is 60 to a comeback. Medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. 30. With Doc Thompson. When this country exists for the purpose of helping people and you weren't even willing to take the help on the terms the country has provided that has done so much good in the world, it's beyond arrogance. It's the ultimate arrogance. That's not caring about other people. That's not even caring about your family. That's caring about yourself. This is the Morning Blaze. The Morning Blaze, weekday morning, 6 to 9 Eastern, on the Blaze Radio Network. The Yaron Brooks Show. All right, so we're talking about 
the root cause of, of, of the inability to get rid of Obamacare, in my view, is a morality that is everywhere in this country. The morality that places the well-being of those in need above anything else, everything, the standard for everything, the standard for good, the standard for legislation, the standard for who, who we like politically and who we don't like politically, is the impact that will have on the needy, including, including uh, those who don't have health insurance. So, you know, it's, it's, you got to get rid of this morality. You got to shift morality. You got to shift the morality of, of self interest, of the pursuit of happiness, of taking care of yourself, of being responsible for your own health care. And people who really can't, people who really, really are challenged, which is a fraction of a percentage point, very few people in the world today cannot take care of themselves. Very few people. Well, okay. Then you establish a safety net voluntarily through charities to take care of them. But in no, there's no role for government here. Government is force. Government is coercion. Government is, there not, government is not there to help people. Government is there to protect people, protect us from fraud and criminals and, and gangsters and terrorists and invaders. The root problem is altruism. It's the idea that your my responsibility is to serve others. All right, now, you know, it's a challenge because I promised to do other topics. Okay, Stuart, but Stuart, you have to be really quick because I have to go on to talk about Islam. Go ahead, quickly. Stuart, you there? You're right. I wish people would understand. Aloha. Yeah, I You're can right. hear you. I wish go people ahead. would understand that government is a weapon, not a charity. Yeah, I mean, government is a gun. Everything about government is force, it's coercion. And therefore, I don't believe guns belong in schools. That's why I don't believe in government schools. I don't believe guns uh, should be involved in providing health care. That's why I don't believe government should be in health care. I believe that government should be only do what, what gov- guns are good for. And guns are good for protection. Guns are good for self-defense. And that's the role of government. It's to, it's to defend us. And it's to arbitrate disputes so we don't start shooting each other. But other than that, it should leave us alone. And we can organize to help people who really need our help. The problem is most of the people today don't really need our help. They're just lazy. Or they just haven't thought about it. Or they just are relying on the system to take care of them. But they don't take personal responsibility for themselves. And then I'm supposed to pay for them. You're supposed to pay for them. All of us who did take care of ourselves, who were responsible, are supposed to take care of them. And that's just evil. That is wrong. That's morally, 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 ethically offensive. And that's the reorientation. We need a, the left has a, dominates the moral high ground. Thanks to it. Really appreciate the call. We're going to go to Slav in a second. But the left dominates the moral high ground because they say, look, it's moral, it's good, it's virtuous. You all believe to help other people. All we're trying to do is help other people. All we're trying to do is take care of the needy. How can you be against taking care of the needy? And I go, it's not the government's job to take care of the needy. You know what? It's not even my job to take care of the needy. And you want to take care of the needy, you go do it. And if somebody wants me to take care of them, they have to prove to me that, that there's a value in, for me to take care of them. They have to prove to me some that they're, that they're good human beings at the very least, that they're not being completely irresponsible. Because you know what? If you're completely irresponsible, don't expect my help. And until our politicians are willing to say that. No, but, but we get the politicians we deserve. You'll hear this a lot on the show. We get the politicians we deserve. Until we are willing to say that. Until we, the people, are willing to say, your health care is your responsibility. Get into trouble. You can come and ask me. I might help you. I might not. We have to have the option of not helping. Until we're willing to consider the option of not helping, Government will take over, and government will do it all for us. All right, we're going to take Slav quickly, although I don't really have an answer for Slav. Slav, go ahead. Slav, by the way, is calling from Montenegro. I think this may be the first call ever on the blaze from Montenegro. Go ahead, Slav. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, first of all, I'll, I would like to send you greetings uh, in the name of Montenegrin students for liberty, and thank you for your lecture that you gave us in April. Uh, my question is regarding uh, 
perspectives and economic growth. Uh, how would you comment or explain uh, Germany and Sweden, for example? Uh, they have a pretty big uh, tax rate, and still they are the they have the strongest and the most yep. successful economies yep. so, uh, Slav, in Europe. Yes. So how, how would you explain that? Slav, I mean, thanks, thanks for the question. I'm not going to give you a full answer right now because I, I want to get to this other topic that I promised, but I, I promised to devote a whole show to this. And, and I've, I've, I've spoken a lot about Sweden and Germany. And look, taxes are higher in Sweden and Germany, but it's not all about taxes. I, I talked about this earlier in the show. For example, Sweden has lower regulations on many things than the United States does. Sweden has, uh, has uh, it's easier to start a business in Sweden than it is in the U.S. It's certainly easy to run a bank in Sweden than it is in the U.S. It's not just taxes and the obsession of free market people and obsession, particularly of Republicans with taxes, is mistaken. And we can, you know, and I, I will do a whole show about the history of Sweden and what's happened. But Sweden has actually shrunk the role of government in the economy since 1994. Sweden, the difference between Sweden and America is very small indeed. By some measures, Sweden is more economically free, as is Germany, than the United States of America is today. So it's not obvious because they have higher taxes that they're less free than America. Um, I would still, in terms of, it, it, just because we're talking about health care, I would still, I would rather have health care, uh, health insurance in the United States than Germany or Sweden. If I got cancer or health, dis- uh, health uh, or, or heart disease, I would rather be treated in the United States because I have health insurance and I can find the best doctors in the world here. And indeed, if you get really, really sick in one of these countries, the best remedy is to come to the U.S. So, you know, this whole story about, about Sweden and Germany doing so well is distorted by the fact that every economy in the world is a mixed economy. And then how you, so it's a mixture of socialism and capitalism. And uh, some in America and Germany and Sweden are not that different it's just the mixtures are different, and, and it's complicated to unwind the mixtures. But this, this idea that um, they're socialists and we're capitalists and they're as, uh, growing as fast as we are, it's just nonsense because they're not socialists and we're not capitalists. We're all just mixtures. But again, I'll devote a whole show to this. So, Slav, thank you. I appreciate you listening, and, and keep listening, and uh, watch out for the show on Sweden and on Europe on the relationship between taxes and economic growth. Oh, all right, thanks, Slav. Uh, one other point: uh, somebody on the on the chat here on Facebook says, "Look, the real problem is statism. It's not. Statism is the consequence of altruism. Statism and collectivism are the consequence of the fact that we feel morally obligated to take care of our brothers. That we feel morally obligated to to love our neighbor like ourselves. I don't love my neighbor like myself. I don't love his kids like my kids. I don't love him like I love me. I love me more." And you should love you more. And if you don't, work on it. I don't, I, I don't believe I'm my brother's keeper. I'm my keeper. I'm my kid's keeper. I took on that responsibility. I'm not my brother's keeper. Didn't choose that. But once you accept that moral code that you are, that your purpose is to sacrifice for your neighbor, statism is necessary because we don't naturally take care of our brother like ourselves. We don't naturally love our neighbor like we do ourselves. And therefore, you need a state to force us to do it. And that's the origin of statism. You don't get statism without altruism. Altruism is the source of communism. It's the source of fascism. And it's the source of every form of statism that exists out there. All right. You're listening to Iran Book Show. We're going to take a quick break. And we'll be right back to wrap up by talking about Islam and the left after this break. Clear. This is the Iran Book Show. The Blaze Radio Network. Rabbi Daniel Lappin, On Demand. 
Uh, I know this sounds a little bit weird, but I'd strongly recommend that you make a list of how many people you consider as friends. The good news and the bad news is that there's not as many as you think. How many of us deliberately seek out new friends? I strongly recommend it. This is a principle of ancient Jewish wisdom and is a principle that has been borne out again and again and again. Please connect. Rabbi Daniel Lappin, on demand on the Blaze Radio Network. Paid monitoring spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Attention, this is a public notice from Citizens Disability. If you are one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits from Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, Citizens Disability can help. You'll be given an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, and deal with Social Security. Best of all, there is no fee until you receive your benefits. We only get paid if you win your case. To get started with your free no-obligation consultation, call 800-504-1636. That's 800-504-1636. There are a vast number of conditions that can make you eligible for disability benefits, many that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call Citizens Disability today. Again, that's 800-504-1636, 800-504-1636. That's Citizens Disability, 800-504-1636. This is the Blaze Radio News. I'm Robin Walensky. Every morning on the Blaze Radio Network, Robin Walensky delivers the news updates you need to know. An enormous search still underway They're right now. They're going to be checking the- every building, every nook, every Senator cranny. Gillibrand has blood on her hands. <laughs> And with an eye on your money, conducted over 6,500 air hundreds strikes. rallying in front of Democratic news senators. updates you need to know every morning with Robin Wilinski. This is news on the Blaze Radio Network. Truth lives here. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services and by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6951. A Place for Mom offers free one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. 30 till we come back. Walsh. And sometimes we forget that prayer, it's not some, you know, exercise and sending good vibes in someone's direction. But these days, the more secular version of saying, oh, I'm sending prayers out, we say, oh, well, I'm sending my thoughts out. Well, that, that, that doesn't do anything, sending your thoughts out. Unless you have ESP, prayer, on the other hand, is a supernatural weapon for good. Prayer works. We should pray. Matt Walsh. Available on demand anytime at theblaze.com slash radio. All right, 
great. So some of the commercials during the break uh, forced me to, to, to smile and laugh. I, a, as you'll discover if you listen to the show, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an atheist and don't believe in praying and any of that. So um, good for the blaze for, for being willing to carry an atheist on their, on their channel. I give uh, Glenn Beck a lot of credit. Uh, for that, but but it just makes me laugh when I hear um, prayer being a supernatural weapon. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get into it at some point here uh, down the road. Uh, look, if you're interested in anything I have to say, I, I encourage you to follow me on Facebook. It's Y Brook Y B R O O K, and on Twitter, Yaron Brook Y A R O N B R O O K. Would love to have you as a follower on both those networks. You'll get a lot of news from me. I do a lot of writing. Also, you know, I have a couple of books, a couple of books that I think uh, many of you would be interested in um, that uh, Glenn in, in the past on the on the blaze and on Fox in the distant past has praised, um, you know, free market revolution, free market revolution, how Ayn Rand's ideas can end big government. That's a book I think you will all enjoy. It challenge you. It'll push you a little bit, but but you could benefit from it would be good. It would be good. And uh, then you can ask me lots of questions about it when you call in. And my latest book that came out last year called Equal is Unfair. Equal is Unfair. That should challenge you a little bit. All right. Um, I want to I talk about something different right now, and I'm not going to have a lot of time, so this is going to be really quick, hit and run kind of thing. But it, it, it was big in the news this week, or at least in some news, news outlets this week. And I just got to say something about this. Uh, I'm going to say more in the future about this, maybe even next week. Because I, I think this is this is really a, a crucial, a crucial issue. But you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, two uh, women were invited to testify in front of Congress: uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali and uh, Asra uh, Nomani. And these are women who were raised a Muslim and who are very critical of of uh, Islamic culture, uh, very critical of the way of Sharia law of the way uh, Islamists practiced, uh, practice Islam and very critical of the culture that surrounds it. Very, very critical, for example, of, of what happens in places like Saudi Arabia. Remember, Donald Trump visited, danced with them. They're the best friends. Uh, all American presidents make best friends with the Saudis. Yet, as Ayn Hissi Ali and uh, Asra Anwani presented, Saudi Arabia is one of the most barbaric cultures in the world, particularly in how they treat women. You think about uh, uh, female genital mutilation. In other words, destroying the, the capacity of women to enjoy sex and, and doing that when, they, when they're very young. I mean, just horrible, horrible the, the idea that you would do that to another human being. Or, or child marriages, marrying off little girls. Um, or honor killings. Honor killings. It's when a family member kills a woman because she has dishonored the family because of adultery or because of premarital sex or something like that. I mean, this is true Middle Ages barbarism. This is Dark Ages stuff. And we tolerate it. We tolerate it in the sense that we pretend that Saudi Arabia is our best friend. Now, these two women are incredibly courageous. Their lives are threatened constantly. And they stand up for women's rights, for women's rights, for the right of a woman to live a normal life free life, to be able to drive in Saudi Arabia, not to have to cover their face and their body completely, to not have their genitals mutilated, to, to not be forced to marry at a young age. And they come to testify in front of Congress about this. And they are basically shunned by every Democratic senator on the panel, primarily by the female Democratic senators, Carmela Harris, Kamala Harris, the so-called feminist, the woman who cares about women's rights. And here are women who are actually putting their lives on the line to protect women's rights. Muslim women's rights. And Kamala Harris ignores them, pretends they don't even exist, doesn't say a word the entire session. And the same is true of the rest of the of the, the, the Democrats and, and the female Democrats on, on the Senate panel. Just an Two unbelievable minutes. disgrace. And, and this should be a big story. This should be huge. The fact is, the fact is, and we need to make a big issue out of this, the left hates Muslim women. The left is not, and, and 
you know, not that the right is a lot better. We'll get to that. But somebody has to defend Muslim women. They don't believe in individual rights. They believe in group rights. And therefore, they believe in the rights of Muslims to oppress their own individuals. This is anti-American. This is anti-everything the Founding Fathers stood for. Ayn Hirsi Ali and Asa Nomani are heroes, are heroes that should be respected by everybody. And the idea that they will be shunned by the left, by the left that supposedly stands for women, just proves, just proves it unmasks them, that they care nothing about women's rights, that they care nothing about women. What they care about is group politics, is multiculturalism. How dare we tell Muslims or anybody else how they should live their lives? And this is why the founders, there's no group rights in the founding. It's about individual rights. You have a right not to be mutilated as a child. You have a right not to be raped as a child. That's an inalienable right. It doesn't matter what group you belong to. It doesn't matter what sex you have. This is an individual right. And, you know, it's time this country, left, right, center, all of us, return to this principle of individual rights and that, that's true of healthcare, where you have an individual right to choose your own insurance and to choose your own doctor and negotiate your own price. Ten. You have an individual right to live free of force. All right. Thanks for listening. Five, We're done four, this week. This is your Unbook Show. We'll be back next two, week. One. See you then. Applying the principles Clear. of moral self interest and individual rights on your radio. Right. It's the Yaron Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. So how do you want to manage the taping? Um, I can record whenever you're ready. Don't miss the Chris me, uh, Salcedo show. The Supreme Court of the United States could rule then, uh, any moment now. The fate of President Donald sure. Trump's temporary in travel about, ban hangs in the balance. Now. You know the temporary. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. Some have Thank improperly you. called a Muslim. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Muslim ban. Okay. Bang. Every majority Muslim.